How's it going everyone? So iOS 18 is now officially here to everybody. It's no longer in the beta stage. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and highlight all the new changes, new features, and new integrations that Apple added. Now, along with this update, we also receive iPad OS 18.3, Mac OS 15.3, tbOS 18.3, HomePod OS 18.3 and WatchOS 11.3. Then if you're still using the Apple Vision, 0.2 for you as well for Vision OS. And tbOS will also re be receiving a new 0.3 update for this as well. So of course, timestamps to everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's begin with the phone that we have right here, which is an iPhone 16 Pro. But you do not need to have the latest and generation iPhone to have access to this, as every iPhone that was compatible on iOS 18 will also be receiving this new update. Now, one of the new noticeable changes is the new wallpaper. By long holding and going into your wallpaper edit mode as soon as my phone unlocks, there we go. If we go all the way to the, like the new side to create a new wallpaper, we do get this new wallpaper right here. And alongside with this, if you update your Apple Watch to the latest version of Watch OS, you will also be seeing this new wallpaper theme on your Apple Watch as well, including the iPads to my knowledge as well. Now alongside with this new wallpaper is the new Apple release watch band that you combine to get the perfect combination for Black History Month. So yeah, this is the new wallpaper that Apple added. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good. It even features a dark mode too with that cool animation. Now look at that. And when we unlock it, it also does this cool spin animation, which is random each and every time you unlock. Now, in addition to that, if you have an iPhone or if you're setting up an iPhone for the first time with Apple Intelligence, your Apple Intelligence will now be enabled by default. So if we go into your settings and you don't like that, and you go into your settings, go into Apple Intelligence tab and manually disable it. And then still covering iPhones with Apple Intelligence, if we scroll down back in your settings and go into your notifications, and if you go into summarize notifications on top right here on the very bottom where it says summaries may contain errors that's a new additional text that apple added because i don't know about you but i have noticed sometimes when i bring down my notifications some of the summaries that it summarizes is not really accurate to the message so i guess they just gave themselves a little disclosure right there that's not yet ready now a feature that was really hyped up and I was assuming it would be arriving on iOS 18.3 was the Apple Intelligence battery feature where as soon as you plug in your phone it will actually show you the stats on how long it will take your phone to charge to 100%. Unfortunately, that is not available on iOS 18.3, but word has came out that this is a feature that's currently in the works, but it's expected to be released on iOS 19, not 18. So unfortunately, that new battery intelligent feature isn't coming as of yet, probably sometime during the springtime when we see the beta versions of iOS 19 get released is when we are expected to finally get this feature. And then when airdropping anything from your phone to your Mac, the MacBook Pro icon has been updated with the latest wallpaper that's available on Mac OS. So that's a nice little update right there. But in addition to that, now if we launch our notification section, because now we slide a notification that has summaries inside, you could tap option. We now have this new turn off the app name summary directly instead of having to go into our settings. Now additional things I have noticed from this update, I noticed this from the beta when I was testing this out, was dictation. It's actually more consistent and accurate than ever before. As you're seeing it right here in real time, it's getting most of the stuff that I'm saying 100%. So it's very accurate now than previously. That's something I noticed after testing the beta and the official version, dictation is pretty good. Look at that. Now for the iPhone 16 models with the side power button over here, or I mean side camera control I should say, by long holding this will activate Apple intelligence which will allow us to like scan certain things and tell us what it is and such, answer questions, translate. But new this time is if you scan like a calendar event or something like that, you could actually send that information linked to your calendar on your planner and other stuff. So if it scans like an appointment, a written appointment on a piece of paper or document paper, you're able to actually input that information and put it on your personal planner, which is quite neat. And speaking of camera, if we go into our settings and go into camera and then in the camera control, it now just reads lock focus and exposure. This used to just read AF and AE for auto exposure and auto focus. And now if we go in Safari and then we capture a screenshot and we go ahead and tap on that screenshot and enter the photo page, you do have the crop ability where if you cropped on the very bottom like some section of the screenshot you're trying to capture, 
If you hit done, you do have a new little message popping up telling you that it's not guaranteed that the PDF file will keep the outside content cropped out of the area, depending on the app or the OS you're sending this to. So it just gives you like a little heads up saying it's not guaranteed to crop it out if there's something you're trying to crop out. Additionally, if you ever need to download something on Safari, and you tap download, you'll see the little, there's a notification that pops up showing you your download progress. This works with third-party apps as well. And then other feature for 18.3 is in the wallet app. As now in your wallet app, you could actually tap this little box icon right next to the plus and look at some of your previously made orders as it will now be able to notify you and you'll be able to finally do tracking shipment to see when your order will arrive. And this is all powered by the third-party app shop. So now the Apple Wallet app can actually now do your online order tracking so long as you complete a transaction with Apple Pay. And then whenever you receive an incoming call, that's an unknown caller, on the top left corner, you now have a grayed out option to immediately block that caller. So if this is like a scam or a marketer that you're constantly getting a call from instead of manually having to block them, now you have that option right there on top. And then if we quickly go into our iPhone settings and then we scroll down to accessibility, notice how we have colors, right? But if I go in wiggle mode, tap edit, tap customize, and select the dark mode icons. I'm gonna lighten up my background though. And we go ahead and do that again. The dark mode icons is now compatible on the accessibility where previously it wasn't. Another new feature was, well, an old feature that was available then Apple decided to remove it but that is the calculator app. You see, by simply entering an equation, you can now quickly just spam equal. Because believe it or not, even on an older device like this iPhone mini, as an example, I have an, oops, get that out of there real quick. I have a calculation, right? If I tap equal, it doesn't do anything. So Apple re-enabled that equal spam ability. Another new improvement can be located in the image playground as the image playground has been also enhanced, as it's now quicker to render these images than previously, and the art style has been slightly tweaked, although this one's kind of creepy. I don't know why I'm wearing sunglasses. With sunglasses, I can see my eyeballs. That's really interesting and fascinating. But allegedly, image playground has been improved, and I have noticed a performance increase when it comes to rendering new images than previously, and supposedly the art style is also more accurate, but it's goofy in my opinion. Now, in terms of HomeKit new features, smart robot vacuums are supposed to be compatible on this device, but I have a robot vacuum that has matter. It still does not communicate with my app, Apple HomeKit, unfortunately. So this means this could be a firmware update that we're waiting on third-party brands from third-party manufacturers that produce these robot vacuums firmware update their products first. But it seems like the HomeKit is ready to accept smart home robot vacuums to be compatible here as a, like a tile to turn it on and off. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we should see robot vacuum manufacturers update their products to fully make it compatible with HomeKit now. And there you guys have it. That is everything new for iOS 18.3. If you enjoyed this straight to the point video, again, hit that like button and like, and I'll continue making these quick updates on what's new on the latest version of iOS. Now, if you'd like to watch more, or maybe you're curious what band I have on my Apple Watch, I'll have that link in the description down below, and you could go ahead and watch this video over there where I show you how you could disable the autoplay carplay ability whenever you get in your car and your music starts playing. I'll show you how you can disable that right in that video over there, so it automatically pauses instead of autoplaying, which can sometimes be annoying. At least for me, it is. So if you also agree, Again, watch that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.